Hello everybody, my name is Doomfish, and in today's episode of the Redstone Toolbox, I'm going to be talking about the Hopper. Now the Hopper is something that a lot of people would say is a very simple Redstone component, and I would agree with that, but there are a lot of things about it that maybe aren't so obvious, or a lot of the different quirks of this part that are very helpful to know. So let's just start right away by getting into how you make a Hopper in Minecraft. So all you need to do to craft a Hopper is to go ahead and put your chest in the middle, and then place your iron in an arrangement like this, sort of making a funnel shape, and you'll get yourself a hopper. So the first function of hoppers is that they will suck up items that are directly above them. So if you go ahead and drop an item on top of this, it'll add it to its inventory. We can see that the ender pearl ends up in there. However, if we go ahead and place a solid block above this hopper, we can see that throwing our ender pearl on top, it does not actually pick it up. Now if we move on and place a slab on top of this, uh, we can see this block obviously it's a slab, it is at half the height of a normal block, and we can see that the hopper will actually pick up an item that way. Now something a lot of people aren't aware of is that something like a honey block, which is not a full block, meaning it's only slightly smaller than a quartz block over here, will actually allow items to get picked up on the hopper underneath it. So you can put any uh, block on top of this that is smaller than one full solid block, and it'll go ahead and pick up the free floating items above it. Now similarly, um, the hopper can actually pick up items from a container that is placed above it. So this can be another hopper, a chest, a barrel, a dropper, a dispenser, basically any container in the game that actually holds normal items. So we can go ahead and place a stack of enderpearls in here, and we can see that once every 0.4 seconds, or 2.5 times per second, or once every 4 redstone ticks, an item will get taken from this chest and placed into this hopper down here. Now the next main feature is that it will actually push an item based on where this hopper is pointing into. So we can place, we can change the direction of this by basically um, facing towards the block that we want our hopper to face into, and just placing your hopper there. Now if you place it on the floor here, it'll point down, place it on the side of the block, it'll point to the side. And we cannot place a hopper so it's facing upwards. We can only have it in the side directions and then straight down. But we can see that when we place our items in here, not only do they get sucked down by the top part of the hopper 2.5 times a second, they get pushed across to this chest once every 0.4 seconds, and it can transfer items this way. Now here I have two different pipe systems. I have your standard hopper pipe, which is just hoppers facing into each other to our target destination, and I have droppers facing into each other with a power source over here that I'm going to complete and make a clock. So we can see that if we actually go ahead and start this, we can go ahead and place some items in here, so I'm just going to place a stack of blocks in here, and a stack in here, and I'm going to start the clock. That this dropper chain is actually considerably faster than the hopper chain. We will get one item every 0.2 seconds in here, and we'll get one item every 0.4 seconds in here. So we can see that there's around 40 items in here now, and then in the dropper chest there's actually more in here. And even though I actually put items in this chest, or in this hopper, earlier, I put items in this dropper later, this dropper actually finished uh, transferring all the items from this side to this side quicker. Now the one drawback for sure is that you actually have to power this thing, and it is quite noisy compared to these silent hoppers. Um, but you can make a sort of pipe that travels upwards using these droppers, whereas you can't with the hoppers. So earlier I said that when you place a hopper underneath one of these blocks, it can't actually pick up any of the items above it, which is true. But something you can do to bypass this is by using a minecart with hopper. So you've got a setup where it's a minecart with hopper on top of a rail, and then there's a normal hopper underneath that pointing into a chest. And we can see on the left, with our normal hopper setup, the item won't get picked up, but on the right, you'll see the item actually does get picked up. So this is very useful for farms or something where you actually need a solid block floor, and you can't afford to just go ahead and replace this with a slab, so you can place this in. Another thing you can do with hoppers is you can lock them by powering them. So we have a redstone block here, and we have a normal line of hoppers connecting this chest over here to this one on the right. And we can see that we've got items flowing through here, in fact a full chest full of quartz blocks, flowing through each of these hoppers and heading into this chest right here. But if we go ahead and say lock the middle one, we can see what happens is that this hopper can no longer push items from its inventory to the hopper to the right of it. So this hopper still functions, and it still takes the items from the chest above and pushes it to the right, but we can see that this hopper doesn't work at all, so it cannot pull items that are above it, and it cannot push items out of its inventory. It also can't absorb items from above it like so, so it pretty much stops functioning as normal and just becomes basically a normal container. 
Hoppers also have a priority on whether or not they want to push an item from the inventory, or an, a hopper below it will actually pull the items out. So you can see that if we put items in this top chest right here, with this setup, the items will always get pushed down to this bottom chest here. So I might end up with like one or two in here from the very start, but for the very most part, the items will go into this hopper and then get pulled out by the hopper underneath it and pushed in here. So even though this hopper is pushing into this chest, no items will actually go into here until this hopper down here is completely full of items or it's locked by like a redstone block. And then we can see the items will go into this chest to the right. So something you can do that utilizes the delay part of these hoppers is you can make a redstone clock out of them. So all this is, if you haven't seen it before, is two hoppers facing into each other with a comparator facing out on each side into a solid block with a redstone dust on top, and then a sticky piston above that comparator facing over these two hoppers and then a redstone block on top. So just by placing a sort of output here, and then we can actually place items inside of these hoppers, and that will determine how long the clock will stay on for. So for example, if we were to put uh, 16 items in here, the clock would stay on for 16, or the um, time between like shifts of the clock would be 16 times 0.4 seconds. So like we said earlier, it transmits every, um, it transmits an item every 0.4 seconds. And then it'll see that once all these items are done transporting, it'll just switch back and forth between one hopper and the other, and it'll shift this redstone block over where we can take a pulse out of here. And of course, if you ever want to stop this clock, all you need to do is go ahead and place a lever on one of these blocks and go ahead and flick it down. So just to recap, hoppers can pull in items that are placed on top of them as long as there is an empty space or a completely um, not solid block, so nothing like this quartz here, but slabs and honey blocks work as well. And you can substitute this hopper for a minecart with hopper if you do want to use solid blocks. And the hopper will also take items out of any uh, container that's placed above them, and it will funnel items from a different container into another container if placed to the side or above it. Also, you can make hopper chains, but keep in mind they are slower than dispenser chains, but they're great if you want a compact and silent and easy to build system. And also, we can use our hoppers and redstone clocks to sort of make a toggleable system where you can change the amount of time the clock lasts for without really changing the redstone much. So that's going to do it for today's episode of the Redstone Toolbox. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't be afraid to leave a like, and you can subscribe for more content just like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.